Everybody here so far has been talking about connections. I'm going to expand it shortly as well. Um, gene environment interactions is so people with a strong focus on environmental causes of illness, no question that, that, that they exist. And people working on the, the genes that can go wrong, that you can inherit or that can go wrong in normal cells to go cancer. The fact is that your genes interact with your environment. And so you're really talking about the same thing, but what you're talking about is a communication between the two fields. Um, and your personality can interact with your environment, and, and, and your attitude can interact with your environment. So, so, so the way you approach problems, you know, as a victim or as a vixen, the way you uh, live your life, uh, the way your genes react to the way you live your life, all of these things are connected. And what really is missing very often uh, is, is, you know, we can study genes, we can study environmental causes, we can study personality, it's connecting them is really what we really sort of have to emphasize. And that's really what, it, what, it, what it's all about. And anybody that's been involved in everything, crea anything creative, and everybody here has done creative things in their life. You just, everybody has, sometimes that has to be pointed out to you what you've done that's, that's been creative. It's always been about making new connections. Not necessarily making new discoveries, but, but discovering new connections. One of the most fascinating connections, you, you, Robert, Susan, you're gonna see, I didn't forget you. One of the most fascinating connections is between your immune system and the health of the rest of your body. And this is I, I, one of the most misused terms in, in, you know, in the world uh, is, uh, you know, in this, re, in, in this regard. And you folks are studying this. And you're studying this in a way to manipulate this in terms of making, making this better for people. And I'm wondering who wants to... Who wants to well, I can, uh, I can make some introductory comments about that. The one way that uh, we all know we can take care of ourselves is uh, through our immune system. It's the one system in the body that surveys what's going on and keeps us healthy. I uh, started uh, uh, a scientific career as an immunologist and then went into medicine because I was convinced the immune system uh, can, we can uh, work with the immune system, teach it how to keep us healthy. And there's no better example than in cancer, and in particular breast cancer. We know, speaking of interactions, that the immune system interacts with a growing breast cancer. It's not being ignored. Our immune systems are there fighting it and it's trying to get rid of it. And the idea that we have in our laboratory and with the generous help of the BCRF has made this possible, is to mobilize the immune system, teach the immune system how to attack cancer, when ordinarily the immune system is trained to attack viruses and other types of things. Let's train it to attack cancer, use the same ways it can be very productive there. And that has led us over the years to develop a vaccine, and that's really our um, creative spark that we're trying to bring to the field, is to develop a vaccine to keep breast cancer from happening in the first place and certainly keep it from coming back once it happens. I wanted to focus on the connections part and, and collaboration because one of the things that often happens in medicine is that, uh, and, and Dr. Norton mentioned it, is that there's people in the laboratory and then there's people doing the clinical research with patients mm -hmm. and making sure that those two groups are connected is really important and it can be challenging. And so we like to say that one of the advantages of being married is that we're automatically connected um, <laughs> and that uh, Bob uh, focuses in the laboratory and my focus is on getting clinical trials uh, in, in, uh, available for patients. And it really is uh, critical that those uh, sorts of connections happen. And the way to be creative in, in my, in my uh, mind in science is that you have to see connections that other people don't see and you have to be able to be given the time and opportunity uh, to let those connections come to you. And that's why funding uh, from the BCRF is so critically important to us. Um, let's talk about ideas. All right, and, and it, what's very impressive to me sitting here is that um, uh, without any prompting from me and no rehearsal whatsoever, is that everybody was presenting ideas rather than facts. Um, uh, sort of concepts um, uh, and, and in general. And you know, something that when you talk to any creative person again, you know, they say that you know, before comes the act of creation, there's kind of an amorphous feeling that it's going to happen. And, that, uh, and there's a general sense of, of, of kind of where they're going in a, in, a, in, you know, in a general way. And then that comes down. A lot of people have talked about, a lot of people who are not involved in science and arts and whatever, thinks that there's an aha moment where something pops into your mind. And occasionally that happens, very, very rarely. Usually the aha moment takes days or weeks. Um, uh, it's, it's a slowly evolving aha moment, and then you realize in retrospect that you did have an aha moment three weeks ago, and then it's coming to something, so, something further. Um, uh, you know, I, I must tell you is that I've had 
public occasions like this where I've had scientific ideas while I was talking to the public, you know, that I, I hurry up and scribble down so I don't forget them. You never know when they're really going, going to occur. So I'd like to talk about the act of creativity, all right, and, 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 and how you feel about the act of creativity really in, in your own lives. Um, and, then, and then we'll bring it together into the breast cancer story. Let me start with you, Fumi. Well, so one of the things that, uh, you know, as a physician and a scientist, um, I have a sort of unique role of being able to be in the clinic with a patient and at the same time being in the laboratory. And so the difficulty and the challenges that we have in terms of bringing the two, actually I live the two lives. And it's really amazing, as uh, Larry said, when I'm in the clinic with a patient and my work has increasingly focused on women, young women, who have breast cancer. And you know, for the longest time, we asked that women go and get mammograms beginning at age 40, because that's really the age when you have most women get breast cancer. But when I see a 22-year-old with breast cancer, I have to wonder why, right? And it's that wondering why that then takes me back to my lab to get all the scientists who are using you know, animal models or maybe using cell lines to study breast cancer. And I said, do you know what I saw in the clinic today? Why did this 22-year-old get breast cancer? And why did she get this particular type of breast cancer? Why would I sit in the room and not be able to tell her that, don't worry about it, we're going to cure it, right? So that's where the creativity comes, where an idea starts somewhere. It may take me, you know, overnight thinking about that young girl before I get back to the laboratory and I said, let's begin to think about how to make the connections. It also matters the environment you're in. So one of my best collaborators is a social scientist, right? And what she does is she goes out and interviews people about their idea about breast cancer. And then she comes back to me and said, do you know that people really fear chemotherapy? And I said, really? But we're trained to give it safely. Why do they fear it, right? So if you don't get that input into how you're connecting, making the connections, you might not be driven. And so part of what we're driven to do now is to find targeted therapies, right, that are much more effective than ever before that have fewer side effects, right? And that's why we talk about targeted, because we're looking at what we do that it affects people's lives. So that's how my creativity so, comes. So for it you, goes, it starts with a why. It's a why. It's an observation you know. and a why. Susan? For me, I think it starts with you know, the dream, which is what would you most like to do? And a part of my work is also to see women who are very high risk for breast cancer. And the dream is I give them a shot, they don't get it. And on the one hand, it's kind of wacky. You say that to a scientist, so like, well, you have to do this, 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 this before you get there. But I think there's a famous saying that a long journey starts with a single step, and that's what you have to do. You have to say, this is the wacky idea, and now I'm going to make my way very slowly through it. And that's it for me. We start with a why, we end with a dream. Robert? <laughs> well, you have to talk to people, too. And uh, this idea, I, I remember uh, speaking with um, uh, a patient who had breast cancer, advanced breast cancer, and I said, I have this vaccine. It's the first time we've tried it and would you be willing to try it? And she said, yes. And she said, I only have one question for you. She said, where were you 10 years ago? And I, I said, what, what do you mean? And she said, this is not the idea of a vaccine. The vaccine is to prevent. And almost every patient I've talked to since has said, let's change how we're thinking of this idea of a vaccine. And that really only came out by taking a thought that I had and having another person who wasn't a scientist think about it and give me uh, feedback and, and, and critique it. Now, I, I happen to work with Susan on this, so I get a lot of criticism. Uh, and, uh, constructive it's criticism. It's all constructive criticism, so I know how valuable it can be. So I would add in uh, talking with people and receiving uh, back criticism of uh, uh, the first idea that you have.